the idea of the trips is to partly explore the biodiversity of the Miek Archipelago, which hasn't been done before. I look at every single individual coral and I identify it to uh, what family it belongs to and I look at whether or not it's healthy or whether or not it has a disease. When you look at the mountainous islands here, you think this is paradise, but under the water, it's a different story. They've been preparing for this moment for months. Marine biologists from around the world have come to the Mergui Archipelago to carry out underwater research. The area was isolated from the outside world for almost five decades. The scientists are looking forward to studying rare species and thriving coral reefs. They will live and work on this research ship for 11 days. Their schedule includes three intensive diving sessions every day, including some at night. That's strenuous, but it's the only way they can collect the material they'll need for experiments later in their laboratories back home. The research team was put together by the environmental organization Fauna and Flora International. It includes Dr. Barry Russell from Australia, who will be cataloging the fish species here. Last trip we recorded 409 species of reef fish, uh, and we predict that there will be more than 500 species in this region. So we are hunting for uh, species that we didn't find on the first trip. But the scientists didn't plan on having nighttime visitors. They, they've just geared up to the, the Thai technology. So that this is a this is a really characteristic. This, like, uh, now it's getting darker. I can see another three boats on the horizon. A growing number of fishing boats are now showing up here. They they attract bait fish. They attract squid, but they also attract a lot of juvenile fish. And this is one of the big problems because a lot of juvenile fish are just swept up by these light boats and they never recruit to the reef. And so they're, they're really putting a hole in the replenishment process just because there's so many of them and they're very efficient. Overfishing is having a negative effect on the coral reefs. The researchers will try to determine which of the reefs are still in good shape and which are not. One of the ways to do that is to study mussels. The scientists analyze the bacteria that's found on the mussel's gills. That tells them a lot about the local water quality. If the mussels are in trouble, the reef may be as well. I thought that the reefs were going to be better. So I was quite surprised when I jumped in the water and saw the level of damage, particularly the dynamite fishing. That was something I'd never seen on this scale before. There's nothing but dead coral here. It's a disaster for the ecosystem. Many fish species use the reefs as breeding grounds. If the coral perishes, so do the fish. The researchers also find a number of abandoned nets, which are still deadly to fish. This, this is 12 miles, so you range. The scientists' task is to collect data that will help them to come up with solutions. James True and his divers will install underwater microphones to monitor the sounds made by dolphins and other species for kilometers around. It's part of their effort to gather evidence of illegal fishing operations. Right now in Myanmar and even globally, we don't actually know how much blast fishing is occurring. And so this will be the first study to be done globally, but now we're doing it in Myanmar to show the frequency of blast fishing. James True and his colleagues assessed the results of their research so far. 
There are lots of coral reefs on the archipelago, which has more than 800 islands. But many of the reefs are damaged beyond repair. Others may need up to 30 years to recover. So you see the, the structure of the coral out there? You can't see it here. But the scientists did around. manage to find a few surprises, including young coral growing in places where they'd never expected to find it. I'm very hopeful because I, this trip I've seen strong signs of recovery and I see the potential for, despite all the, the fishing pressure, all the pressures from development, I still see this place as able to come back if it's given a chance. This research will provide the basis for the creation of protected areas for the coral reefs that are still intact. The scientists have hidden their underwater microphones well, so fishing crews can't find them and destroy them. Some of the researchers plan to return to this region, and when they do, they hope to find that this underwater environment has recovered, at least partially.